taking off nice bits. It's, it's really good for doing the aerofoil and most of the sections. Like if you just had one of these, you could probably do the whole blade, but it speeds things up with some electric power tools. Um, it's also, I mean, this, although this top six is just a flat surface and the plane is quite good at doing some of the bits of it, as soon as it starts to, like, it's rapidly changing its angle there, although it's a flat surface still, you can't get a plane in really practically there, so using the draw knife. You probably also use rasps for that bit as well. Yeah. Um, so we've only got two of these unfortunately. Um, We've only got two of these, unfortunately. I tried to buy one yesterday, but they stopped selling them because no one's using them anymore. Um, <laughs> so you're going to have to share them around. Or, um, with a lot of this stuff, because there's a lot of people but only three blades, well, we've bought some other blades to play around with. I think we've got nine blades altogether. So um, there might be some times <coughs> where you're looking over someone's shoulder. Or sometimes it's quite good to work in twos because you can check, check measurements. So measure twice and, and cut once. Um, but don't just chat in your two and sort of be not looking. Yeah, yeah. It's to increase it. concentration. Yeah. Distraction. Concentrate on what you're doing. Uh, the other tool that we, could, we have been using already is the um, electric planer. But um, I'll go through that individually with people when, when they go. That's just to get the wood to, to the right thickness um, in the first place. Okay. Um, we mentioned a few health and safety issues there. Most of the, the injuries that you can cause, you to cause yourself are from sharp objects cutting your fingers. Um, and it's quite easy to do, um, even, if you're, even if you've had experience. Um, the main, main mitigation against this is, is to think about what you're doing. I know it sounds really obvious, but every time you make a cut, just be aware of who's around you and what, what, where your cut's going, what could go wrong if you, if you slipped. Um, if you drop the draw knife, don't try and catch it in your hands because uh, you'll obviously cut your fingers. Um, the other things, dropping any of these heavy planes or um, files on your feet. We haven't got the most appropriate footwear, but just be aware of if things do fall off um, to avoid you getting your toes, toes munched. There's definitely some safety issues with the electrical machinery, but um, as I said, I'll go through them individually. I think mostly it's just there's going to be lots of people in the workshop, uh, so beware of people running around. Don't rush, take your time, take your time. Don't run around. Don't run around, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Robin, is there a first aid kit in the building? Or um, there's one there? in this there's room. One right there. There's one just there, yeah. Okay, so um, there's a first aid kit. If you can get one. And I'm a trained first aid kit. Yes. <laughs> cool. Time scale wise, are we, what are we going to work? Just of course, 10. Can you break it half a level or something? Yeah. We should just push um, through. We arranged to sort of do it in sessions because obviously yeah. some people can't commit for the whole day. So 9 to 11 ideally was sort of the first sort of preparation. Like. Yeah. Um, so I will have to leave it early. Um, and then I think 12 to 2. And then two to four, something like that, anyway. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Just to let you know that there might be more people coming and going around this. Yeah. Do you have another introductory talk? If, if there's natural breaks, just go with them, kind of thing, and play it by ear, I reckon. Cool. Yeah. Um, any other questions thus far? Okay. I was just briefly going to tell you about um, the rest of the turbine, because we've got it here, and um, this is what you're going to be making. So, we thought we'd bring an alternator to show you. Uh, the rest of it. So the blades fit onto um, this, which is the alternator in the mountain. Um, the alternator, which actually produces the electricity, um, has got two moving parts and one static part. These two moving parts are called the rotors, and there's two steel discs, and on the steel discs you've got permanent magnets, really strong neodymium permanent magnets, and they're glued, 12 of them, in a circle that go round facing another 12 that go around the other side and inside this stator is um, nine coils, copper coils with enamel windings that are wound, hand wound with a coil winder. I think we brought a coil winder to show it's you. Just there. Yeah, and you can have a look at that. Hand wound in a coil winder and then soldered together um, and then the rotor and the stator are all put in moulds and cast in fibreglass um, and resin. So that encapsulates everything and gives it a protective layer from the, from the weather. 
Um, and so it's the blades attached to the rotor. At the back of the rotor is a bearing, which I think you've already got for this project. It's a wheel bearing from the back of a Vauxhall Astra. And um, then as the blades spin round, it spins the rotors, the magnetic flux cuts through the copper coils, inducing an alternating current. And then the alternating current is transmitted through the wires, through this conduit, into this box. And in the box, the alternating current is converted to DC and direct current for charging a battery through these bridge rectifiers. Um, and the bridge rectifiers give two outputs, AC, uh, DC positive and DC negative, and those two cables just go down the, down the, the tower and connect to your battery. And then everything's held together quite simply with um, steel angle um, welded together. You've got mounting points for the, the stator here and here and here. And you've also got a tube that the whole thing sits on. And this is called the yaw tube, uh, so that the turbine can spin round to face the wind as the wind changes direction. Um, and this bit on the back is for the tail. So there's another tail that we didn't bring that sits on top of here. And, um, faces out the back and then yeah as the wind changes direction the tail changes too. Yeah. Yeah again I mean a few subtle things have changed and you'll if you're following the latest design make a slightly different mounting and a slightly different stance. It's got a few less coil one less coil and everything's got a bit beefier and that's just from feedback of people's turbines presumably breaking and you just writing an extra few millimeters into the dimensions of everything. Yeah, it's meant to be very simple, and as you can see, like there's nothing really, there's no gears to go wrong. Everything's hanging on that one bearing, which you don't need to build yourself, so it's kind of yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty easy to make. Benefits of the design, yeah, robust, chunky, um, quite easy to build. Most of the materials are available anywhere in the world, um, steel or reclaimed bearings. The magnets and the copper are quite bespoke that you need to get, but everything else is pretty standard you can get anywhere. Um, yeah. Um, how much power would it produce? Like, what can you power from? So this one will produce about um, 500 watts, and there's uh, designs for like bigger blades, bigger alternators, anything up to a kilowatt. Um, but that's like that's how much it produces at a certain wind speed. Mm -hmm. What's more interesting is how much it can produce over a month or over a day. Um, and I think the, the ones for this is about um, three or four hundred watt hours over a month. Um, so in, in practical terms, um, I think one of the bigger ones would be, would be enough to run, run your house if you stripped out like your washing machine or your kettle and you, you, like, you, you burn wood for hot water. Um, so laptops and lighting and um, computers. And Fairly intuitively, it completely depends on how much wind you've got. Yeah. Um, but it, what a lot of people don't realise is it's a cubic relationship with wind speed. Um, that's why we're called V through power, because uh, it's the velocity cubed is the power available in the wind. Uh, so if you double the wind speed, you get eight times the, the power 